In the daily mains answer writing program of Sarath Chandra IS Academy, we would be giving one mains question on everyday evening for which we would be giving the answer in the video explanation format on the very next day. So, for accessing these questions and answers, you can join our telegram group daily mains answer writing program Sarath Chandra IS Academy. If you join in this telegram group, you will be able to see the questions every day evening. Also, you can upload your answers. You can write the answers, take photo of them, take a pic of them and upload them. Also, you will get a chance to see the answers uploaded by many other aspirants so that you can actually acquire some of the good styles of answer writing of other aspirants. However, if you do not want to upload your answer, if you just want to see the questions and the answers, then you can join in the telegram group telegram channel UPSC mains answer writing Sarah Chandra IS Academy. In the second telegram channel friends in this second telegram channel you will not be able to upload your answers but you can see the question every day evening and video answer explanation on the next day evening. Okay. So yesterday's question yesterday evening the question that we gave was from general studies paper 1. The topic is Indian culture the art forms literature architecture from ancient to the modern times. So from this topic the question that we gave we gave was South Indian literature received a great impedance during the medieval period when compared to the ancient period. So for this question how do you write the answer? First let us look at the introduction. Friends in the introduction in the introduction of the question you should explain that you have you know you, know, you have some awareness some idea about what is South Indian literature and also you should know from when the medieval period started almost 7th century 8th century AD how the South Indian literature during the medieval period has got greater impetus than in the ancient period. So friends I want to tell one thing that if this question actually appears in the UPSC mains examination and if I am writing the mains examination definitely in the limited time of 7 to 8 minutes in the limited space limited ideas my answer would not be as good as I would be presenting right now. So don't be bogged down by the number of points I am going to tell. In the actual mains you can write few points compared to what I am telling now. So friends with that disclaimer let us start the answer. So, in my opinion, in the introduction itself, you should make very clear that South Indian literature majorly consists of Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam. So, any literature in these four languages is called as South Indian literature. Also, what literature friends? Actually, you should tell that Literature can be, you know, a, a group of poems, songs, song lyrics, short stories, novels, you know, all these things can be called literature. So, in which period have you found most of the South Indian literature in these languages? Mostly found them in the medieval period. So, we have to say that most of the literature in these languages we, we find mostly after the 8th century CE. After the 8th century CE means after the from 812 820 from 750 it started it started 750 760 and most in the 11th century 12th and 13th century that was the time when we found most of the poems you know uh, short stories novels and plays song lyrics in these languages so you have to mention that also you should not completely ignore the ancient uh, uh, period you have to say that during the ancient India a foundation was laid on these languages and literature however they have you know prominently increased during the medieval India that you have to sell and also friends see till almost till 7th century and 8th century AD almost till that time these languages Dravidian languages actually we call them as the Dravidian languages they are mostly combined means wherever you find Tamil literature there in between you find some Telugu words some Malayalam words some Kannada words also you find so we call it as proto Dravidian languages so proto Dravidian language was there during the ancient period there was no clear separation between Telugu Tamil Kannada and Malayalam so the separation actually took place only from the 8th century or 9th century AD so that thing you can tell also you may add a line about how every language it may be Tamil Telugu Malayalam whatever 
in the ancient time it was old literature old language it has evolved around 8th and 9th centuries most of the languages literature have changed style it's called middle and in the 12th 13th centuries they have become modern 14th century modern literature has come so you can add that point with this introduction let us directly go and address during the ancient india what developments happened in the south indian languages literature during medieval india what what uh, you know developments happened we will compare them and show that medieval india has got greater impetus so coming to the tamil see the tamil nadu region the southern tamil nadu northern tamil nadu some parts of kerala karnataka was also a part of the northern karnataka was part of tamil nadu so it, that region was mostly ruled by cholas cholas cheras pallavas and also pandyas pandyas so mostly chora chera and pandya they were there both in the ancient india as well as in the medieval india medieval chola and pandyas are called as later cholas and pandyas so during their reign when they were ruling tamil nadu in the ancient uh, times at the time the administrative language or official inscriptions mostly you do not find in tamil tamil was not prominently used during those days however during the pandyas under the pandyas Sangam, Sangam literature has evolved. Sangam is a kind of meeting among different Tamil poets and uh, story writers. So most of them have met and they have elaborately discussed about the Tamil literature. So during the during these Sangam meetings, lot of Tamil literature actually ancient Tamil literature has evolved. However, that Tamil literature was not completely Tamil. There was some combination of uh, you know Sanskrit, some combination of Telugu was there in the Sangam literature. So, in the ancient dynasty, you can say that the old Tamil was not the complete Tamil that you find these days. Even around 100 BC also, some Tamil words were found in the Egyptian pottery. So, the origin of Tamil was there in ancient India. However, it mostly started only from the medieval India. Even in the in the late ancient India, late ancient period, around 500 CE also, the Tamil writings were was mostly religious based. You can say that the Jains, the Jainism, the Buddhists, Buddhist writers, even you know the Shaivites, even the Shaivites, and even the Vaishnavites, Vaishnavites. Most of the religious writings were there in Tamil. However, that was a combination of Tamil and Sanskrit. Whereas during the Bhakti movement that started in the 6th century and evolved in the 7th, 8th, 9th century, the local Tamil people started writing the poems in praise of God and other style of writing mostly in the Tamil literature. That's when the Tamil language got, the Tamil literature got impetus. However, the classic Tamil, the classic Tamil started only from the 12th century and most important friends whenever you write these kind of things in history while writing history answer along with writing the broad framework of the question asked you have to prove it by you know throwing in some facts and statistics here and there for example religious writings you write some religion names also when you want to say that classic classic Tamil actually started in the medieval times you write some for example Kamba Ramayanam was classic Tamil and Peri Puranam. You can write some one or two facts, one or two facts to prove your point. For example, even the Bhakti movement, the Bhakti movement, the Alwars, Nayanars. If you know names of some Alwars and Nayanars and some of the writings they wrote, you can mention them. That will increase the authority of your answer. So mostly this Tamil in the medieval times where they got impetus or patronized, patronized by same Cholas, Sherias, Pand uh, Pandyas and Pallavas. Pallavas and the Prabandham style. Prabandham style. Prabandham is nothing but friends. The poets will take certain concept from the Itihasas, from the Puranas, and they elaborately discusses this kind of style actually evolved only in the medieval India. Now coming to the next Telugu language. When you come to Telugu language, see Telugu in the ancient time, Telugu was not as developed as Tamil language. For example, Andhra Pradesh was ruled by Satavahanas after the Mauryas, before the Guptas, most of the Andhra Maharashtra was ruled by Satavahanas. And Satavahanas never patronized Telugu language. They have patronized Sanskrit and Prakrit. To prove it, you can tell names of, you know, for example, Sarvavarman uh, in the court of Satavahanas actually composed Sanskrit grammar. Okay, he was there during the period of Hala king. And Hala king 
Hala was the famous king of Satavanas. He himself actually wrote Gata Sapta Sati. That also wrote in Prakrit. During that time, Ashwagosha, a famous scholar, he wrote Buddha Charita. This is a famous bit for the film's examination. Even that was in the language of Sanskrit, which clearly shows that the Andhra and surrounding regions do not have any patronizing of Telugu. And most of the writings were in Sanskrit and Prakrit, which means in ancient Andhra Pradesh, Telugu literature was not there. However, Till 7th century, here and there some Telugu words are found. Even in the 575 CE, there was an inscription where some of the Telugu words are found along with that Sanskrit was mixed. So a combination of Sanskrit and Telugu was there till 7th, 8th, 9th centuries. The exact Telugu, the exact Telugu, extant Telugu literature purely in Telugu mostly started only from 11th century where the famous Telugu trio, Nannaya, Nannaya, Tikkana, Tikkana and Erra Pragada. Friends, Nannaya, Tikkana, Erra Pragada are called as trio of Telugu literature. They have, uh, they have translated Mahabharat from Sanskrit to Telugu language. In fact, most of the works of early Telugu literature in the medieval India were just translation of Mahabharata, Ramayana, Bhagavatam. For example, Bhagavatam was translated by Potana and then Purana's translation was there. Only later on, only in the 14th century, 15th century, the other styles of literature, for example, Anamacharya, who was famous for Carnatic music, he actually wrote Kirtanas, Sankirtanas in Telugu language. Even Srinath, Srinath Mahakavi, he, he actually started the Prabandham style in the Telugu literature. So, the, mostly the golden age of Telugu literature was during the Krishna Devaraya of Vijayanagara Empire. Friends, here you can make a point. Vijayanagara Kingdom, Vijayanagara Empire has actually given impetus to all the Dravidian languages. They encouraged the literature in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam. That point you can write even in the introduction also. It's a very important point, the Vijayanagara Kingdom. Now, so in this way, you tell that in ancient nothing was there. In medieval, most it improved. Whereas in Tamil literature, ancient some foundation was there, medieval has completely changed, increased. Now coming to Canada, coming to Canada friends. See, Canada also in the ancient times, in the late ancient times, Canada literature was there. For example, the Kadambas or Banavasi during the late ancient period, their official language, the administrative language, the kings have actually encouraged Canada to be used as an official language. So, we can find it even in the Halmidi inscription. So, Canada actually started during the ancient time. However, only during the Gangas, friends, Gangas ruled Karnataka, a part of Karnataka from the ancient times, so almost from the 340, 340 CE, 340 CE they start ruling. However, only in the 8th century, 9th century, 10th century, only then the kings, the medieval kings of the Gangas of Karnataka, they actually patronized the Kannada language and most of the famous poets, writers of Kannada literature came up during this medieval time. Some of them are king, for example, King Shivamara, you, you can name him. He not only wrote in the Kannada, but also he patronized several Kannada poets. Even the Chaundraya in the 10th century, Chaundraya also encouraged the Kannada literature. However, friends, see the main trends. You can just mention the trends, if, even if you do not know the facts, you can mention the trends that from 9th century to almost 12th century, almost 3 to 4 years, Kannada literature was completely compiled, written by the Jains, Jain literature. For example, Jain writers were actually patronized by most of the Karnataka Kannada kings. May it be Chalukyas, may it be Chalukyas, Hoyasalas, Hoyasalas, even the Gangas also. Gangas also pattern as generators. Even Rashtrakutas, even Rashtrakutas have patronized the uh, Jain writers who wrote mostly in the Kannada language. That is when the Kannada language literature actually was encouraged. However, after the Jain, after the Jain literature, in the 12th century, the Lingayatism, it is a part of the Bhakti movement, which, which we found in the Tamil also. In Tamil also, Bhakti movement encouraged the local Tamil literature. Similarly, Lingayatism in Karnataka from 12th century started encouraging the Karnataka literature so that local people can understand very easily. That's why Bhakti movement became very famous in most of this Tamil Nadu, Karnataka surrounding areas. It is 12th century AC. If you want to um, write a fact to prove the point that Jain writers were, uh, were encouraged, you can write Kaviraja Marga. Kaviraja Marga during the 9th century, 
you know, Kaviraja Varga was written uh, during the King Amoga Varsha. You can write one or two points of such. Even Lingayatism also, if you know few Bhakti saints of Karnataka who wrote in Kannada literature, Kannada language, you can mention their names and you can mention two or three of their works. Okay, friends, similar just like in Telugu, in Kannada also, three famous uh, poets actually they were these writers were patronized by Chalukyas. Chalukyas patronized, you know, the Pampa, Ponna, and Ranna. The Pampa, the famous writers of Kannada literature, Pampa, Ponna, and Ranna. They uh, actually, their writings have given a, a great impetus to the current literature. literature. However, as I told you, during the Vijayanagara Empire, the Vijayanagara Empire encouraged the Vaishnava literature, Vaishnavism literature, not only in Kannada language, Kannada literature, but also Telugu, Tamil, and Malayalam also. That's why Vijayanagara kingdom during that time we call it as golden age of the Dravidan literature. Finally, the last language, Malayalam. Friends, Malayalam mostly was not at all there in the ancient India. Somewhere in the Sangam literature, two or three words of Malayalam you find among the Tamil literature. So other than that, mostly in ancient India, Malayalam was not there. You can say it's none, zero almost. However, from 850 CE, in the early medieval age, in the 9th century CE, in the Syrian copper plates, because there was trade between Syria and Kerala, the, the, the kingdom of Kerala, Syrian copper plates, we find some of the Malayalam words, but they are not pure Malayalam, they are combined with other languages. And as I told you, every language of Dravidan has old, like middle and modern. Right now, you're using the modern literature. The old literature started almost during that time. One example was Ramacharitam, written in the old Malayalam literature. Now, this style of this style of Dravidan language was found in most of the times. Manipravalam style means the Malayalam language in combination with the Sanskrit language. This was there almost till the 13th and 14th centuries. So, one example is in the Zamorin, in the Zamorin of Calicut, as you know, Calicut was ruled by Zamorins in those days, 13th century. In the Zamorin of Calicut, Chempu Kavyas became famous, and Chempu Kavyas were all written in the, the style of Malayalam mixed with the Sanskrit, Manipravalam style. So, however, by the 13th, 14th century, slowly uh, the uh, Malayalam literature started getting completely separated from the Tamil literature. So, by the 14th century, almost by the 14th century, when you find uh, the Karnasa Ramayanam and Karnasa Bharatam, which was completely written in pure Malayalam language, that's when the Malayalam literature got impetus. Also, we have to here mention definitely the Travancore kings. Travancore kings have actually patronized, patronized the modern Malayalam because of which we are able to get a lot of Malayalam literature. Thus, friends, however, in the UPS examination, sometimes you will have very less time. This question you may be writing at the end of the exam. During that time, what you can do is, instead of writing all these things, you can just draw a small chart. If you have very less time, draw a small chart. Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam. In the ancient, if you know one or two things, for example, Tamil, you know, Sangam, or some in inscription, you know, or Telugu, for example, 575 uh, CE inscription, you know, or Kannada, the Halmidi inscription, you know, or you know, the, the, uh, the ancient, later ancient kings who encouraged Kannada, one or two points to write. Malayalam almost not there. And medieval times, more patronized, more literary works were there, more poets were there. You mentioned those names. So clearly, you can understand from this way that during the medieval time, the Dravidian literature, South Indian literature have got greater impetus than the ancient. That's all. Even as yes, history is mostly two things. Number one, you should write the broad framework, evolution. Number two, throw some facts here and there. You can easily get very good score. Friends, in the actual examination, definitely you may not be knowing these many points. Even if I write the mains examination, I will not be knowing these many points. Even if you know one fifty percent of the points, it is enough. You can still gain 70 to 80 percent of marks. Here the point is, you should write how it evolved and good introduction. You should tell clearly that you understand the pattern of the question. You know it, they don't expect from you a lot of facts actually. And friends, the question for tomorrow. The question for tomorrow is from General Studies Paper 2. General Studies Paper 2. So, the topic is the first topic of GS Mains. GS Mains, Paper 2, first topic Indian Constitution. History underpin underpinnings, evolution, features, amendments, provisions, and base structure. From this topic, the question we are giving is this one. Please read this question carefully. The polity questions of UPSC Mains are evolving, they are becoming more dynamic. 
they are not asking anything specific they are asking very broad questions you should be able to address the question by combining several facts that you know from the constitution to make the answer you know uh, look better the, the answer should actually exactly address what the question is meant to be what the question asked you so 15 marks question 15 marks in 250 words roughly try to write in 12 minutes only though you are writing only one question don't try to spend 20 minutes in 12 minutes quickly write the answer and upload in the telegram uh, group so the however friends all the answers will not be evaluated whenever we get time we will evaluate few answers particularly those students who regularly write the answers and upload in your telegram group may be given preference in the evaluation thank you friends